I want Leo Zier continuing the conversation with the WeaveWorks crew. Today, we're going to talk about all things WeaveWorks and Terraform. Stay tuned. I want Leo Zier with another Just Lightning episode, continuing the conversation with the WeaveWorks crew. Um, I have back into the show, James. James, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me back. James, we uh, we talked all things, uh, you know, in this series, we talk all things WeaveWorks and GitOps and VS Code. And today we're going to talk about all the cool things that you guys are doing with uh, with Terraform. But first thing first, before we dive in, James, who you are and what is it that you do? Yeah, thanks. So I'm Director of Product Management here at WeaveWorks, and I'm leading the effort to build Weave GitOps, which uh, Weave GitOps, the free and enterprise versions. And so it's built on Flux and just trying to get GitOps, make it easier. Uh, for people to adopt and work with. James, you know, I've been uh, I've been a long time user of Terraform. Um, I think from the from the early versions, and when I started working with GitOps, right, I always thought to myself um, how those two two worlds are jelloing together. Um, it's something that always been kind of, and I've seen and I've seen just blog posts here and there. I've seen people just doing funky stuff, but it was never really an integration, it was more like stitching, uh, which is, you know, one of the best hobbies that we have as, as you know, as developers, as DevOps engineers, as IT professionals to do those stitchings. But at the end of the day, when you're trying to move fast, you need things to, to be a bit more integrated. So today we're here, James, to talk about your integration with uh, Terraform. Talk to me about that for a second. Yeah, so we're built out uh, what's called the TF controller, right? And the since we're already built on top of Flux, Flux established really nice architecture for you know, working with Customize and Helm and everything like that. But yeah. to be honest, really, it's only one small piece, right? When you're talking about your overall system and architecture, just getting those applications onto Kubernetes is only getting you partway there. There's a ton of infrastructure and other things that you need to set up that kind of glue glues everything together. And so we really wanted to expand the scope of what we could do and build with GitOps. And so that's one of the main drivers for the TF controller in the first place. And so, so James, you know, I know that you have a cool demo to show me today, but but I wanted to get your thought on something here. You know, I've, I'm, I have a lot of conversation around developer experience and application development velocity in the context of uh, in, in the context of the new world that we are at, or the evolved world that, that we are at as part of how do you bootstrap infrastructure? How do you connect it to, you know, in a multi-cloud fashion? What is the architecture? And also, what is the developer role in that? And the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that developers are, today, developers are being asked to do more. It's not just about, you know, that Node.js application on that Rust code that they need to put down or compile things in Go. It's it's more than that. It's it's really building, sometimes it's building the infrastructure, sometimes it's actually creating their own pipelines and all that. What are your thoughts around that? Also, so someone, someone that is, you know, a director of product management, obviously you have a lot of visibility into those things. Like, what's your thoughts around this? Um, I, I mean, I think it's just, everything you just said there, right? Like this is the world we're moving towards. And I think it's important because one, we need to make these types of operations be able to scale, right? Mm -hmm. So application teams taking on this role, it just will reduce a lot of friction and within any organization, right? But then I guess the, the outstanding question is, how do we make that safe secure and scalable, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, platform operators are comfortable, security feels comfortable with this, right? And I think that's really where some of our tooling comes into play, where you can really, um, you know, building templates and things like that, right? You can kind of bake in these best practices mm -hmm. and then developers can just, you know, fill in some fields, queue up all of this infrastructure on their own, and they're just gates and checks along the way. And so it, it's really, we're trying to build software to allow these organizations to mature safely and move towards mm -hmm. that model and be successful with it. So James, uh, you know, obviously, you know, me, love me some good demos. Um, and I know that, I know that you, you brought, you brought me a demo. So let's just dive into, you know, into the weeds. Show me, show me how everything is meshed together there. Yeah. So 
right here, I have a demo uh, a demo app that I've kind of been building out. Mm -hmm. And we're just kind of focused, right? You're going to use uh, this Terraform YAML in the same way that you would with Customize or Helm uh, if you're an existing Flux user. Mm -hmm. Really, the key difference is, though, you're with Customize, you're targeting a specific path and folder that contains your manifest in YAML. Yeah. With Helm, you're targeting a Helm chart. And so with Terraform, you're ultimately targeting a file that has a bunch of HCL in it, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Being able, and then from there, right, when you commit this and push this to Git, we're able to go ahead, pull in, read that HCL files for you, run Terraform plan and Terraform apply, and, you know, giving you that feedback loop about how everything is going and, and deploying, and then constantly monitoring it after that, right? Once it's deployed, we'll be looking for drift detection and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so right here, I just have... Uh, some YAML that's set up, and you can see here it's a Terraform object, and then yep. I have it Azure Config, and I'm simply pointing to a path based Terraform Azure Config directly mm -hmm. within this repo. But you could point this at any repo that you've set up with Flux, any source. And so with that, if I just jump into this Azure Config, you can see I have this main.tf file. Yep. I have some variables set up, and you can actually customize these variables from that YAML if you want mm -hmm. to, or just use your basic system. And then from there, right, I have four different uh, Terraform things. So it's really easy to break them up into separate modules and yep. even have them tied as dependencies where some can roll out and then others have to wait for those to actually be done before they begin actually the plan and apply mm -hmm. process. So it's yep. a nice way to be able to orchestrate everything. And so, you know, imagine I just committed all this and pushed it up. And, you know, when you come to here, here's Weave GitOps Enterprise. And when you come mm -hmm. in, you can actually see all of your Terraform resources listed out here. You can see what commit that they're, they've been put on and as well as any error messages that might be occurring, right? And you can see that some of them are doing, kind of running in a, a current reconciliation to see if any changes occurred. Mm -hmm. um, and so I can jump in here and just go ahead and dive into one. And so we're planning on making a lot of improvements to the UI. This is just a very uh, mm -hmm. MVP. But from here, right, I can get details um, about the, the object. I can see the inventory of it, and we're going to be adding more fields to this inventory list so I can understand everything that was created under mm -hmm. this Terraform. Um, I can see the events. I can check the YAML for everything as well. And uh, from there, right, you're also able to really see and tie together these dependencies. So for instance, this Azure Web Pub Sub does have an error happening with it right now. Mm -hmm. And this Azure Functions Terraform is dependent on that completing successfully, right? Mm -hmm. and so I can see right here, hey, you know, dependency flux system Azure Web yeah. Pub Sub is not ready. And so, you know, it's a clear indication on the orders and steps. Um, just a brief example of dependencies. This is uh, one for a customization, and we're going to add this UI to the Terraform as well. So you'll be mm -hmm. able to visually see those dependencies without piecing all of the YAML together yourself. And then finally, right, when I come to the Azure dashboard, you know, here are four web pub sub services that I've created and that are running right now, you know, and these were all built and deployed with the Terraform controller, right? And the nice thing about this too is because we have this context with Terraform and we're able to constantly detect and run things for you, right? We also are able to then produce notifications and this uses the standard Flux notification system. So you can send it to Microsoft mm -hmm. Teams or a generic webhook, any destination you could think of, right? Yeah. And so when I come here, I have this channel set up and I've had a, all these messages coming in, you know, yeah. as it's been running, right? So teams are able to then also be able to respond to their infrastructure and tie it together with their application deployments, um, et cetera. And so it, it's really trying to integrate all of these things together and make them work seamlessly. 
So this is cool, James. And and I wanna and and I just wanna maybe wrap my head around this because how how do you do the variables piece? Because Terraform, you know, when you're when you're deploying Terraform, just kind of in the way, and I, I usually don't like to use the word best practice, right? Because best practice is something that, you know, maybe on an average fit to most, you know, most organization. But you know, obviously there is there is a delta between different organizations and how they're approaching this. But specifically for variables, how how does the Terraform flow as part of as part of WeWork GitOps um, works in the context of different variables? Like, can you maybe? Explain this to me. Just how do I change those variables as I am deploying um, those those GitOps configurations? Right. So I, I should have set it up for the demo, but it, ultimately, right? Um, you know, you have this variables TF, right? And so what you can do is configure configure this Azure config, right? And to be able to accept various variables, right? And then at that point, what I'm able to do is I can kind of make this a reusable module in that sense then, because yeah. I can come to my TF Azure here and then it's um, under the specification, right? I can do variables and then define those variables, right? So let's just say, uh, for an example, let's just do US yeah. East uh, as an example, right? And then it's like, well, not only do I need to need that, but I also need an additional, I, I need an additional one and I want it deployed separately for the West. So, you know, I can come here, point at that same location and inject a different set of variables and, and roll that out. And so that's just one small example of yeah. what you can use, right? And, and this is not, and this is not just to uh, maybe for you know for our viewers, just making sure that we're level setting here. This is not just an um, a simple integration on on a pipeline, like when you have like bunch of Terraform, uh, you know Terraform plans, and you have a variable file, and you know you have your secrets and all of that, and you're just calling those files as part of your. CI, this is a much deeper integration on the, basically on the operator level, like the way that Flux is able to read that kind that is Terraform. So that's that's pretty different, right? It, it is, it, it, it's definitely a different model because, right, we, since we're really trying to take Terraform and instead of, you know, this push model that we've all typically done in the past, right? Where you have right. some CI workflow, okay, go ahead, run plan, run apply, and, and patch it to there, right? Instead, what you're doing is you're kind of saying, Kubernetes, you do this for me, right? And mm -hmm. so with that TF controller, it's able to pull in these CRDs, and ultimately these CRDs are like defining how that agent should be deploying, you know, um, yeah. deploying the Terraform for you in the end. And this is really, you know, just kind of maybe wrapping wrapping this demo and this and and just kind of sharing sharing a thought here, James. Like you mentioned at the beginning, this will allow us to, you know, using using the GitOps flow and Flux and you know GitOps Enterprise and all that good stuff. Basically, it creates the end-to-end -end flow from infrastructure all the way to the actual applications that are Kubernetes-based application, right? Which is the yeah. bread and butter of of Flux and WeWorks, you know, until today. But I think the Terraform is just kind of okay. So now that's now we're start now you guys are starting to look at the more seriously on in the infrastructure world, right? And how and now people are actually provisioning infrastructure. So that's pretty cool, just kind of to see that end to end. Yeah, and it, it really extends to right. Like if you're a large enterprise, right? Maybe you're not running all of your applications directly on Kubernetes, and you might be using some managed app service, of, you know, on Azure or something, right? Yeah. And so this gives you that flexibility of if these application teams are deploying Kubernetes, great. These application teams are using Azure Functions, right? Like you can all manage it from the same place and have a full context of it uh, of where where everything's at. So. Oh. Very cool, James. Thank you so much for uh, teaching me um, about the Terraform model, the Terraform integration for uh, WeWorks uh, Enterprise. I'm curious to if you know if our viewers uh, um, is interested in those kind of stuff. Let me know in the comments below if this is something that uh, you know you feel that you're gonna use, or you know that there is a use case for your uh, organization. How do you plan to use that? Are you actually see that as a potential for the current pipelines that you have 
in your organization? Let me know in the comments. Um, and James, I wanted to say thank you for, uh, for joining me uh, to yet another good episode of Jumpstart Lighting with the WeaveWorks crew. Um, and make sure to like, subscribe. As you can see, we're coming up with new series, nuts and bolts, more things are coming. So make sure to like and subscribe so we will and hit the notification bell so you know when we're coming up with a new episode. James, again, wanted to say thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And for the Jumpstart viewers, I'm going to see you next time. Bye.